This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. We are coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios. Coming out of a long weekend, uh, hopefully everyone's rested and raring to go. I mean, we're also, by the way, uh, saying goodbye to the last financial year and looking ahead into the new one, uh, the last quarter gone, looking into the second quarter calendar 2024. So lots to talk about. This is, of course, also the election season. I'm Prashant with me. My colleague Sonia and Nigel. Guys, hi, morning. Hi, good morning, Prashant. Good morning, Nigel. And lots of cues to track this week, right? There's the RBI policy. There's also the... Um, the US March jobs report that comes out on yeah. Friday. So we have our hands full and all the celebrations are now over. So back to work. Well, uh, welcome back, guys. It was uh, good to have you all back and plenty of action to catch up on. So let's get straight to it. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think we'll, uh, you know, the big question to really ask is whether global markets and generally the sentiment out there will remain as benign in the second quarter as it has remained in the first quarter. I'm talking about January to March. I mean, that is behind us now and we are looking into the second quarter calendar 2024. I'll get to that in just a bit. But, you know, just to start with what's most important, right, uh, from a global perspective, top down, you had Fed Chair Powell who spoke and he sounded dovish once again. This is, of course, uh, you know, <clears throat> at the end of the uh, close of l last week. And uh, this was, uh, this is important. So he unequivocally dismissed the strong reading, inflation readings for both January and February. You might say, well, we heard the Fed commentary at the FOMC meeting, right? So what's the big deal? But the point is, after the FOMC, we got a couple of more data points, which uh, indicated that data is strong, stronger than expected, right? Uh, but uh, there was no real uh, heed which was paid to that in any significant way. So the message from pa uh, Powell, and he's, of course, uh, boss man at the Fed, is uh, absolutely dovish. Uh, just to sort of add to that point, one of the data points we got, the last one, and this is important from a Fed action perspective, is the core PCE. Uh, they watch it very closely to, to determine where inflation is headed. Uh, and month on month, that came in at about 0.26%. There was a slight upward revision to the month of January. So this was largely in line. Uh, but uh, you, uh, you know, since Powell was speaking, he reacted to the data point which we got that day. He said that the Fed PCE is more in line with what we want to see. Uh, he kind of... Uh, uh, said, well, we're okay with it, and it's uh, proceeding in the correct kind of trajectory. Uh, on the other hand, in sharp contracts, just one day before uh, to when uh, Powell spoke, you had another gentleman from uh, the FOMC, he's a voting member, who said, it would be prudent to hold uh, rates at current restrictive stance, perhaps for longer than previously thought. So you can see very clearly there is a bit of a divergence which is emerging within the FOMC as well. Those who believe that uh, rate cuts will perhaps start, there will be two cuts according to the dot plot, and those who believe that perhaps uh, higher for longer is what is needed. Uh, and as I said, the big question amidst all of this is this, whether the Goldilocks kind of situation, which, which is, you know, uh, inflation which is, uh, which is perhaps holding high but expected to come off, uh, and uh, that kind of... Uh, fosters expectation that rate cuts are perhaps just around the corner. And that's a perfect kind of nice scenario which persisted through the first quarter, whether that will be, that will continue or that perhaps is, uh, that will be at risk from higher inflation and high yields as well. We'll find out. Just near-term action, right? Now, on Friday, not very much. NASDAQ was down, uh, this is Thursday, sorry. NASDAQ was down about 0.12%. The 10-year yield at about 4.21. The dollar index uh, of course, uh, uh, ended at about 104.5, absolutely flat kind of close. The market here, uh, I would say, will see a bit of a make or break week uh, going forward. This is largely because we've, uh, you know, the correction that we've seen from the mid middle of January, uh, that has largely sort of been, uh, we saw a correction and the markets pulled right back. Thursday, the price action was pretty interesting. Uh, from the highs, of course, uh, we, you know, we came off very sharply. But on the Nifty, we came within 10 points of 22,526, which is the all-time high, right? Uh, so the immediate task for the Nifty will be to cross that level once again. And then, of course, of course we're all set. Support stands at the 40-hourly exponential moving average, which is at about 22,152, about 150 points away from where we left off. The Nifty Bank, it broke above 47,270, which is the 61.8% retracement of the full decline. But we did not close above it because, of course, in the last second half of the session, uh, you know, we had that sharp correction. This is Thursday session. The immediate resistance for the Nifty Bank will be Thursday's high, which stands at 47,440. As we begin this new week, I mean, I think uh, 
you know, I think uh, th there's nothing to indicate that the sentiment should turn sharply negative or anything. Perhaps, uh, you know, if one, would, if one were a betting person, one would say that the correction which we saw from the middle of January to the lows that we had, perhaps that is perhaps behind us. Nothing very large, but uh, we kind of look up rather than down from here on. It's, uh, the gift nifty is indicating about a 40-odd point higher start. Sonia. Okay, you know, uh, so it's going to be a good start, right? But yeah. today is also All Fools Day, April <laughs> Fools Day. So you don't know if that's a, that's the way the market is going to shape up or not. But no, jokes apart, I mean, it's going to be a good start to trade. And it's been a really good, uh, you know, quarter for the market. If you just look at what's happened, right? I mean, in Q1, we had the US markets, which gave you phenomenal returns. And the S&P 500 in one quarter was up 10%. Uh, the Nasdaq was up over 9%. The Dow was up about 5.5%. Big moves coming into a lot of these uh, generative AI-related stocks as well. So we'll keep tracking that. Uh, the US markets, in fact, saw its fifth consecutive positive month of gains in the month of March, that is. And all eyes will now be on what happens in the next uh, couple of weeks in terms of data. You have the March jobs report that comes out on Friday as well. So we'll track that very closely. Apart from that, for our own markets, there is the RBI policy. Uh, don't expect anything much from the policy. It comes out on Friday. No change in rates expected. But there are some analysts or experts that see the possibility of a change in the stance. There could be a surprise change in the stance to a neutral to prepare for the runway for rate cuts going forward. So that's something that perhaps you can expect. The Nifty has had a smooth run. It has recovered all of what it lost. It's up 1.5% in the last five trading sessions. And I'm also watching out for the auto stocks today because uh, the auto sales for the month of March will be out. Now, the broad trends are that two-wheeler sales growth will be very strong. However, the passenger vehicle growth has slowed down and the commercial vehicle growth continues to be on the weaker side. So, it's going to be a mixed bag this time around in uh, the month of March. But uh, what are you watching out for? Lots to track this week. Well, that's right, Sonia. As you all mentioned, right, we're kick-starting a new fiscal this year. Uh, so, you know, last year was actually very, very splendid. But just want to wa warn our audience that last year was actually special. You know, you can't get this sort of a performance on a year-to-year -year basis. So last year, you did see that the broader markets did and big, big outperformance. The Nifty Bank, that was a relative underperformer. And that's the one that I'm tracking. And that's going to be the near-term driver of the markets. I'll tell you why in just a bit. It was up only around 16%. Today, volumes could be a little bit tepid because there's a clearing holiday year in India. And globally, some markets are shut as well because of Easter Monday. So volumes could stay a little bit tepid. Now, the Nifty open interest actually is a little bit lower at the start of the series. But if you're looking at the market-wide positions, well, it's as high as can be. So the market-wide open interest continues to re remain at record highs. The Nifty open interest, though, is at relatively lower levels. And the Nifty bank rollover was relatively higher in comparison to the Nifty. So that's the one that I'm going to be tracking. The big cues for this series itself will be the earnings. You'll be getting, uh, you know, the RBI policy and also early trends on the monsoon as well as uh, general election. So those are the top factors you need to track. What are the FIs doing? Well, at the start of the series, they're not as net short as what we saw maybe in the prior series. So the net short positions are only around 24,000 contracts on the short side. March as well as February, well, the net short positions were far higher. So there are not too many shots in the system, but sometimes it's a blessing in disguise. The, on, on Thursday's trading session, what was good was finally the Nifty and the Nifty Bank, they managed to climb that 20 DMA and conquered it on a closing basis. So that's encouraging, though we came off the high point of the day. I'm looking at the options data, 22,300 put, as well as the 22,500 call. Well, both of them were fairly active. And just looking at the options data and taking into account the technical factors as well, it appears the market is in the range of around 22,100 on the downside to around 22,600 on the upside, going by this options data and going by the technical levels uh, as well. The, you know, the, if the Nifty needs to move higher and it needs to make record highs, well, it's going to be rather important that the Nifty Bank participates. And those, you know, from, from its all-time highs, it's still away, closer to 2.5% or thereabouts. So that's the crucial number you're looking at. The Nifty Bank is going to be the driving force. The rollovers are relatively higher, and it's been an underperform of the past fiscal. So keep an eye out on that mark as well. The stock that I'm tracking today is Nalco. Well, we did see it conquer the 20 as well as the 50 DMA, ended closer to those levels on Thursday's trading session. It's still more than 10% away from its, uh, you know, from the 52-week high. And also, fundamentally, aluminum prices have been strong. And also the Chinese data that we got over the weekend, the PMI data, well, it was relatively better in comparison to what expectations were. So I'm keeping an eye on Nalco, technical factor playing out. And there are some, uh, you know, triggers with regard to aluminium price move as well. So that's the one I'm tracking, guys. All right, uh, Nigel, that's uh, an interesting kind of sort of cohort, a uh, list of things to watch out for as we begin.
uh, the second quarter of this particular calendar. Before we uh, get any further, let me quickly tell you what's lined up here in the first half of uh, the uh, show today, the first half hour of the show today. We'll get you updates from markets across the globe. Peter Cardillo of Spartan Capital Securities will be joining in with exactly that in just a bit. We'll get our research team uh, to tell you which are the top stocks to watch out for the day. Uh, and uh, at about 8.30, we'll get a fundamental stock check done with uh, Prakash Divan. We'll ask him what he likes in this market. All right, uh, there are, uh, there's a lot to track actually as we kick off trade. On the equities front, we have a comment coming in from Sunil Call of Goldman Sachs who says that India offers the best long-term growth prospects in the region and a resilient macro backdrop. He says after 20% earnings growth last year, he expects 16% earnings CAGR in 2024-25, which will be the best growth in the region after the tech-driven cyclical recovery in South Korea and Taiwan. He thinks valuations are likely to remain rich given the strong earnings delivery. He expects the Nifty to reach 24,500 by the end of March 2025, which implies 11% price, 15% uh, USD total returns. Driven by earnings, he favours domestic sectors and is overweight on autos, industrials, utilities, telco and insurance. And he raises his call on IT to neutral. That's interesting there.